Okay, on this problem it says the model for average life expectancy is L equals negative 3.017 times 10 to the negative third T squared plus 0.321T plus 66.867. Sounds extremely messy, but really this is just a number in scientific notation, so it isn't that bad. Now stop being a wussy and get going. Okay, let's let's get going then. Okay, so this means times 10 to the negative third means move your decimal point three places to the left. So here's one, and then I'll need to move it two more places to the left, which gives me 0 0.003017 t squared. Okay, this is just an exponent on a number. That doesn't uh, affect it. It is a, it, it, it moves the decimal point, but it's still a quadratic equation because it's the variable that matters. It's the variable squared, so it is a quadratic equation. If you need any help with uh, scientific notation, there's a reference chapter at the end of the book that uh, goes over scientific notation. But basically, if it's a negative exponent, move your decimal point to the left that many places. If it's a positive exponent, move your decimal point to the right that many places. So now we got the equation in a nicer format here. L is average life expectancy, and T equals zero. Well, T is the year you were born, and T equals zero is the year 1950. So what do we need to do with this? Well, anything it wants us to do with this quadratic equation, we can do on the quadratic uh, Excel sheet. So let's go to the quad sheet. Here I am, and I just typed in those coefficients right here for A, B, and C. My quadratic coefficient, my linear coefficient, the number in front of the x is 0.321, and my constant at the, one, at the end is uh, 66.867. Now, what's the x-intercepts? Well, here they are. There's two x-intercepts. Uh, they really don't have a lot of meaning on this problem. This actually would mean this x-intercept means 211.29 years after 1950, because that's the base year. Life expectancy would be zero, because the x-intercept is really a coordinate to 11, uh, 211, comma, zero. This means 104.89 years before 1950, life expectancy was zero. So this is uh, the coordinate negative 104.89 comma zero. Well, they're way out of the domain for this problem, but uh, maybe we might be asked, what's the maximum life expectancy? Well, the mi maximum life expectancy is automatically calculated right here in this area, and it's 75.4 years old. And when did that occur? 53 years after the base year. The base year was 1950, so this would be the year 2003.19. So if you happen to be born there, then that's the year, according to this model, that uh, people born in that year have the maximum average life expectancy of 75.4 years. Now, if you wanted to find out something more realistic, like in what years would you need to be born so that your life expectancy would be, uh, the average life expectancy for people born in that year would be 70 years old. Well, I'm given a life expectancy. I'm given a Y value. That's where L was. Over here is the dependent variable. So I would type in 70 for the Y, and I get two answers. 10.87 10 year, 10 years after 1950, and also 95.52 years after 1970. Now, if you want to see those points on the graph, we could make the start. I'll just do equals this value, or you could type it in, and I'll make the end this value right here. And now I get the graph, and we can see that it reached 70 right here at, well, we can't see it exactly, but it's somewhere around 10 years, 10.87 to be exact. And out here, close to 100, maybe about 95. Well, it was 95.52. We're also at the height of 70. What's the maximum? Well, here's the maximum spot right here, 75 point something. What was it? 75.4. When did that occur? Down here, somewhere between 40 and 60 years, but you get it super exact right here. So, uh, and again, we could make tables down below if we wanted to. And, uh, but really putting in an X to get a Y or put like, for example, if we said, what's the uh, average life expectancy for somebody born in 1990? Well, 1990, the base year again was 1950. So 1990 is 40 years after that. So 74.87 years old is what uh, the average life expectancy is supposed to be according to this model for people born in 1990. And uh, if we were asked, when will the average, in what year would you, year, in what when would you need to be born so that your average life expectancy would be 80 for the people born in that year? Well, if we put 80 in here, we're going to get no real solution. The reason it says no real solution, let me put these back to typical values here. Uh, but the reason why you get no real solution is because this is higher than the graph goes. It doesn't go any higher than 75. So if somebody says, when will this happen? You don't type in no real solution. You type in never because it's never going to reach 80. Okay, and that should do it on that problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem.
Okay, on this example, it says find the number of items manufactured X that produces a maximum revenue R in units of dollars. The equation is R equals negative 2 times the quantity X minus 500 squared plus 100. Well, right here, that's what's making this a quadratic equation. Now, the easiest thing to do on this is go to the quad sheet, and this equation is not in general form like this. If I scroll to the right, it's in standard form. The A, the number in front of the parentheses, was negative 2. The number inside the parentheses was minus 500, and the constant at the end was positive 100. Again, look at that equation, minus 2, minus 500, and plus 100, and that's why we put those coefficients in there. And then as soon as you put those in there, uh, you can answer anything you want. Here's the x-intercepts, here's the y-intercept, and here's the maximum. The maximum dollar value or revenue is $100, and that's if you manufacture or sell X of these or 500 of these units of whatever they are. And if we wanted to find out uh, what would be the revenue if we sold, uh, I don't know, let's say 501 of them or 500 or whatever, um, well, the, the revenue would be $98. Or maybe we might want to know, when will the revenue be $50? So we could put 50 in here and get these two answers. When will the revenue be uh, $200? Well, it's not going to reach that. So the answer would be never because it doesn't go above 500 What we can see is that whenever you have a quadratic that is in this form right here, this standard form, then the vertex point is always the opposite of this number for x and this number right here for y. So if you have an equation, let's say like this, x minus 5 squared plus 1, the vertex point is going to be at 5, 1. This one, it's going to be at negative 5, 2, 1, 3, negative 5, negative 10, 5, 10, and negative 4, negative 7. Now, if the leading coefficient is positive, the parabola is going to open upward, and if the leading coefficient is negative, the parabola opens downward. Okay, now if you ever have a quadratic like this, uh, then what you would need to realize for the vertex point is you set what's inside the parentheses equal to zero to get the x part of the vertex point. Like the reason why this x part of the vertex point is at negative four is because you set x plus four equal to zero. If you set x plus four equals zero, you take the four to the other side, you get x equals negative four. So to find the vertex point on this, you would set the four x plus five equal to zero, take the five to the other side, you get four x equals negative 5, then divide through by 4, and you get x equals negative 5 fourths. And that would actually be the vertex point for this one. But if we have a parabola like this, negative 3 times 4x plus 5 squared plus 10, uh, and we wanted to graph it or, or whatever with it besides finding the vertex point, then you would need to FOIL this thing together. Now, to FOIL polynomials together like that, uh, there's a sheet near the end. Well, actually, no, it's just the very next sheet, to tell you the truth. In this sheet, actually, you can FOIL some polynomials together, and one thing you can do is square uh, uh, binomials. And when I look at this thing right here, 4x plus 5, that gets squared. Well, I could do that 4x plus 5 times 4x plus 5 and get 16x squared plus about 40x plus 25, or I could put in the coefficients right here on the poly sheet. I think they were 4 x and then a 5. Just put in the coefficients and here's what this is. 16x squared plus the assumed sign there is plus, plus 40x plus 25. Now you'd have to multiply that through by negative 3 and add the 10. And I think there's a little place here that you could even do, do that bit, everything except for the plus 10. So let's see, the a again was uh, negative 3. So negative 3, a 4 and a 5. And here's that much done for you. And then all you'd have to do is add the 10. And 10 on to negative 75 gives you negative 65. And then at that point, we could go ahead and type in our coefficients into the uh, quadratic sheet. And that would be over in this area. Over here, we could type in those coefficients and, and graph that equation.